Hello and welcome. This is uh, my big, big, big military watch listing with um, German World War II issued Wehrmacht watches. All of these have uh, DH markings on the back. Um, that's how you recognize the Wehrmacht issued watches. Wehrmacht, as you might know, just means uh, army. Um, well, basically means defending force, something like it. Um, and yeah, just like I showed here, they always have a D, the serial number, and the H. Um, so, these are not all of my DH watches. I've still got a few more, but um, well, I think they're in a box that I misplaced somewhere because I didn't come across them. But uh, I... I put them from in alphabetic order from A to Z, or should I say from Arsa to Zenit? And well, we'll s these are all wristwatches, but we'll just um, well focus on the pocket watches real quick. Uh, these are both Silvana, and uh, I apologize for the shitty lighting, but. Um, well, it's winter time now, so it's dark really quickly, and I didn't have enough time to do this during the day. So yeah, this also has a um, D serial number H. Uh, this one was freshly serviced, so looks really sharp. This one is a, a bigger case. This actually doesn't have D H markings, but clearly is also military issued. I didn't uh, clean it yet because you still see all kinds of crud around the bezel. But uh, it can be cleaned off, obviously. Um, often these kind of watches would actually have the serial number, the DH markings on the side. But this one doesn't have any markings whatsoever. Alright, so let's start with Ersa. Um, these are three Ersa watches. All three have a really, really nice dial. The Arsa are one of the more common watches, although uh, to find them in a condition this nice is um, not that easy. Um, these all have a, a screw back case with the same similar DH markings. Uh, this one you can see um, is um, fully original, original crown, very nice condition. Um, this one also original the plating is worn and this one plating a bit worn but it's in good condition then next up we've got b it's a uh, buren um, bulla and bwc buren you might know from the british dirty dozen watches uh, Buren also supplied one of the dirty dozen uh, which has the same movement as this one, which is uh, rather special, I think. This one's very nice and it has a sweet clip-on bracelet. Like, um, it's like a slinky or however you call it. You can just clip it on and yeah, it's pr pretty unique. Um, it's uh, only f first time I saw it for this watch and I haven't found another one since. Then this Billa um yeah original although um it's pretty worn then this beautiful bwc nice condition uh, but i i'm not sure the plating might have been redone it's a bit hard to see through my camera and i didn't inspect every watch before making this listing because 87 watches guys um, it's quite a bit okay next up we've got civitas um, the civitas you've got quite a few and um, also variants because uh, well the exa you've also got variants um, but yeah the civitas you've got these but then you've also got these hands uh, which is slightly different um, also markings are slightly different as well um, next up we've got Choisy. Um, this is a very, very rare piece. You barely ever come across them. And also in very cool condition. Um, below the Choisy, we've got a BWC. Uh, oh no, I'm in the wrong. Wait, what? 
Okay, yeah. <laughs> I already did. Uh, we're at the sea now. This is a, a nice Kronos, uh, also a very rare one. Also really nice condition, although the case has been polished and has been re-chromed. You can tell, um, well, it's just super glossy. The edges are not as sharp as they used to be. You can also tell on the sides, um, here the fixed bars, um, you can see through, which means that they have been polished because usually when they have been polished, you can see the fixed bars on the sides. Well, um, normally it's smooth, you wouldn't see the bars. Next up, we've got Doxa. Um, I will highlight this one because it's a stainless steel case. Um, most of these have a um, chrome plated case, so stainless steel is very rare. Uh, nice condition this. The other one is a chromed case and has been re-chromed at some point. But um, yeah, also nice condition, nice dials. Then we've got the Etanche, which are believed to be French watches that were confiscated and then um then they were reissued for the germans um the etanche are very special because they've got well this one is just etanche on the dial but all the others have numbers this one is 25 this one 26 no this is 51 this is 89 this is 26 and then um yeah they're really small like 28 millimeters um and they've usually got a very high number and yeah it's just very special so yeah it's believed they were confiscated um from the french army uh, when the germans uh, conquered france and these were mostly issued to women who worked for the army but yeah it's all um it's all speculation next up we've got this beautiful eloga which uh, has very nice, um, well, just really nice dial. Um, this is fully original case, the crown has been replaced. Um, after the Eloga, we've got the Edo. This has a bit of a different dial because it actually has, um, it doesn't have the railroad track because most of these have the railroad minute track like the Grana. Uh, but this one just has a single open stripe track which uh, gives the dial a lot bigger appearance also the case size is uh, about 34 millimeters um, this one is a uh, oh yeah a silver plated as 1130 while most are gilt um, next up we've got grana grana as you might know is uh, the most well elusive of the dirty dozen but Grana, they also delivered watches for um, the German military and also for uh, the British military with, um, with uh, the ATP and the Dirty Dozen. Uh, but this one is by far the nicest. Um, has a nice stretch bracelet as well. The stretch bracelet, by the way, is also um, original German, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there are a few from back in the day, but yeah. Um, anyway, um, like when you have a bracelet like this, you always need to check them for markings. This one uh, is later, it's not from the wartime, but you've got some bracelets that actually do have, um, well, Bundes markings that were actually issued to the German military. Um, these granas, as you can tell, they've got uh, slight differences. This has a glossy dial with uh, metal hands. Well, these have um, white painted hands and nice syringe hands. Next up, we've got Gala. Gala is actually rather special. I've got a, a few variants. I've got one, two, three. This one is a big size. This one is a small but super crisp and a very low number. This one is a white dial. Um, I will highlight all three because all three are special. This one just super, super nice dial. Um, and big case and also low number. The Gala for some reason always have a low number. This one 874. This one even lower number. It's a smaller model but just really, really sharp, gorgeous blue hands. 
and it is number 97 if i remember correctly um, yeah it's a bit hard to see here with the limited light available yeah let's pull this one up real quick oh. there we go number 97 yeah so it's very rare to have these low number watches um, usually they've got higher numbers and next up we've got this one uh, it's a very special one with a wide dial and center seconds which uh, is believed to have been used for surveillance um, this one also the lowest number you can find uh, d9h um, so yeah it's uh, likely being used for surveillance purposes after Grana, we have uh, after Gala, we have Glycine. Uh, Glycine, they're still active to this day with nice watches. They're most notable from their um, Airman, I believe it was uh, the twenty-four hour um, sweet uh, watch with a special hacking function. And yeah, these are really really nice. I think this one, the case uh, back has been sterilized. Still has the markings, but they've been scratched off. Uh, quite um, poorly but yeah really nice dial I like these because the dials they patinate in uh, beautiful colors this one is um, like a tropical chocolate and just really mesmerizing after the Glycine we've got uh, the Hado and the Helma the Hado I'll just glance over real quick they're not that special although they're also rare but yeah this one has been re chromed obviously very thin um, looks this one is original already thin but this one is even thinner that's how you can tell then we've got helma re-chromed original re-chromed um, these hands also have been um, redone or replaced even next we've got this really really rare help rose in a amazing condition it's a center seconds which is rare of course um, but it has a DH markings, like, um, well, this is the same DH markings as the Helios would have, I believe. Well, the 3190, that's on the case back of the Helios, usually, if I'm not missing. Oh, no, no. Um, or, no, it's on Helvetia, uh, which we will get to in a moment. Yeah, this one, really astonishing watch. Um, very sweet piece uh, and then we've got the Helvetia which is really beautiful I think the hands are a bit uh, more special Helvetia you've got two variants this one has uh, the caliber 82A and all the others have the caliber um, the caliber 1130AS so here you can see the back is basically the same as the Helvetia so one might wonder if the help bros actually originated as a help bros or if someone swept out the helvetia back um i haven't done any in-depth research into it um but that will happen over time up next we've got more helvetia this one has a uh, also has the 28 yeah here you see this is a lower um lower serial but all of the helvetia have the 3190 on the case back so be sure to look for that when you're looking for a nice helvetia next up we've got helios these are one of the most common you will find um yeah you can see the uh, crystals aren't in the best condition but i prefer to keep them original especially because this is the original crystal you can easily swap it out but i don't care because i don't wear this one anyway um, but yeah these um always very widely spaced dh and um, um well you can actually find them in pretty good condition uh, sometimes really depends some are badly worn others are really nice but yeah you'll have to find then up next we've got the most well one of the most desirable and rare of the bunch this is the longin and longin are very very rare um, 
they are supposedly only issued to officers and they are just really really nice these two um well everyone wants them but you can barely ever find them i'm lucky enough to have two of them but it took me 10 years well the first one i actually bought in my first year of collecting for well next to nothing the second one i actually bought a year ago and i just looked upon it um yeah just by sheer luck i i found it and obviously i immediately knew what it was so i had to have it especially with this dial it's just too pretty this one also uh, stainless steel so also um very durable case nice design and Elongin obviously also made um, the Dirty Dozen for the British military. Up next we've got the Leonidas, which I also showed you for the Luftwaffe. And also showed you for the ATP watches. Because Leonidas, um, they made watches both for the British and the German. Until they, well... And then they got bought up by Hoyer in the 1960s. But Leonidas actually made very nice Bund watches as well for the Germans. Um, after the World War, they made very nice um, Flieger watches. This Mimo, um, it used to have the DH markings. But uh, the D and the H have been scratched off. But you can still, well, it has been polished out. But you can still faintly see them with the right reflection. Yeah, Mimo is uh, also a bit more rare, but especially to find it in this condition, just really nice. Then up next we've got Minerva. This one isn't that nice. Let's get the other one. This one very nice. Uh, sadly, the case has been re-chromed, but the crown is original. Um, it has a, a longer serial number usually. Then this one is a very special Minerva with a white dial. Um, the markings, as you can see, same as usual. But yeah, white dial usually points to a more, um, well, a different kind of um, employment. Um, well, office employment, not in the field. Then we've got Murris. This one, obviously the nicest, but you can't see the back. This is what the back should look like. Um, this original crown. And yeah, this one has been re -chromed. You can tell the lugs are thin. Also has been repainted, I believe. It's actually, well, with this shitty crystal, it's hard to see. But more than likely been repainted. Um, next, we've got Nisus, which is very, very rare as well. Um, the case, as you can see, is a bit corroded. Um, but that's no big deal. Uh, still a nice watch. Very nice dial and let's just keep the corrosion out of the case i can actually get that washed off but there's no need so well the corrosion means um the chrome wore through and then it's the base metal that's corroding because the base metal is always a, a combination of things next up we've got page or page or however you want to pronounce it uh, the these watches were actually manufactured inside of germany uh, there's a few more um, of the no-name brands. Um, these ones happen to have the DH stamps, but most of the German-made watches don't have DH stamps. The DH stamps generally are only for Swiss watches. This one, you can also tell the KJ Arrow. It's a uh, Kalmar & Jordan. It's a German case maker from the Black Forest, if I remember correctly. I will put these, uh, these page watches aside because um, I will use them in another um, video as well. Um, quickly recap, these are smaller size. They have um, pop-on case bags. Well, most uh, have screw case bags, but these just pop on. This one, Para as well, the Para Brugsicher, means, um, um, well, uh, it won't the it means the mainspring won't break um it's um yeah they often don't have the dh markings but i do have one or two with the markings but they're very very difficult to spot they are here at the bottom normally oh this one actually has a dh you can tell the h 
and the D over here. And yeah, these are um, a bigger size. I've got a few of them. And yeah, they come in a few varieties. They were also made in Germany. They have a pop-on case back and always have this uh, 7, um, 782S on the thing. And then at the bottom, you'll have the serial number. And well, if you're lucky, it has the H, but usually it does have the DH. This one also has the H, as you can see. Uh, this one has the original strap, which I, well, obviously wanted to keep. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've got a strap somewhere with the original stamp still on, but uh, it's a bit tough to see. Anyway, um, on to the next one. We've got uh, Phoenix and Pronto. Let's start with Pronto first because I've only got one. This is fully original, um, great condition. The plating is a bit worn, but that's normal. Uh, then Phoenix, uh, these are also well similar to Arsa um, when it comes to rarity. They're not that rare, but um, yeah, pretty nice uh, dials usually. And these have beautiful fully loomed 1 to 12 uh, numerals. Um, after Phoenix, we have Record Watch. Record, um, well, you also have seen them for the Luftwaffe, but also for the British World War II, Dirty Dozen, and ATP watches. Uh, Record, clearly, they didn't discriminate, they supplied to whomever wanted to buy. Um, these, you've got a few variants um, in variant conditions too, but I really, really love this, uh, especially this one. It's one of the rarest you'll ever find because it's a big size. Normally, they're about 34 millimeters. This is 36 millimeters. Um, I don't know how or why it got made, but it is incredible. It's in superb, all original condition with the original um, Bund strap. This is like a true piece of history and it's just really, really remarkable. Really like, like this thing is just so groovy and it's just very, very, very nice and special. Um, then, well, I've also got this one on a bunch strap, but this one is, um, I believe, a later strap. But this one is also the original strap, which you can tell by, um, well, the not so good condition of it. Also, original crystal, which has yellowed, but the watch itself is in great condition overall. Um, yeah, the strap is uh, is <laughs> is good for for trash, but I like to keep it uh, the way it is because. Well, like I said, I want, well, I said it in another video, I uh, aim to make a digital museum with all these things. So, yeah, why not keep it in museum condition, huh? Uh, next up, we've got Recta. Uh, for the Recta, I have uh, four watches and they're in varying conditions. Well, this is mostly due to the crystal. Um, but they're actually, the Recta, I really like them because they are usually in really, really nice condition dial-wise. This one has a super crisp, glossy dial and just very sharp case, nice case back. Um, very wearable pieces, these. After Recta, we've got the Revue Sport. Um, the Revue Sport are a bit special because they've always got the arch. And I don't know, but the arch does speak to me because all the others, They've all got flat text, while the review has its arch of text and really gives it a special feeling. Also, this is a stainless steel case, which is uh, well always a nice bonus and rare, and it has a nice heft to it. The dial is in uh, excellent condition, glossy, nice finish, so it will stay well, as opposed to this one, which has a really shitty dial, but... Um, the reason why I like this watch is because it comes on its original strap from Le uh, Lieutenant K. Fuss and it has um, it has a marking somewhere um, over here. It has uh, the eagle. Let's. 
Um, let's see if I've got my loop here. I do. Okay. Yeah, so this one is the the Rijks Eagle. Um, also the the classic eagle you see in the World War II stuff from the Germans. Um, well, basically meaning this was uh, the officially issued strap and the guy who it was issued to was Lieutenant K. Fuss. And yeah, he felt the need to write his name on his watch. So that's nice. Um, yeah, who, who knows how, like how, what, everything. Um, but yeah i i haven't investigated uh yet but it could be a very interesting part because why did the, why was the name written on there did he do it himself or was he captured in a camp and did they put the name on that yeah well i'll find out maybe um next up we've got the sylvana sylvana is actually one of the more common ones as well um They've got a few variants too. These are uh, same, but um, well, mostly the same, but this one has a few more markings. Uh, the lesser markings is in better condition because of uh, a more glossy dial. This one, a uh, very nice, nice dial and sweet piece. This one, uh, the Stoa, also a German made watch. Stoa brand, you probably know, they're still active to this day. Uh, so I had a few watches for the um, for the Luftwaffe, but for the paratroopers, but also this the H watch. Um, it's in nice condition. I really like this piece. Well, just it's very very difficult to find the Stoa watches, so I'm happy with this one. Then the Trilona, also a very rare one, barely ever come across it. Sadly, the case has been re-chromed, but um, yeah, very nice dial. Then this one, I don't know what to think of it, honestly. It's a Wittnauer um, with the H markings. It's center seconds. I bought it from a long time collector. Uh, he started collecting in the 1950s. Um, so yeah, this is how he got it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I haven't found anything about it yet. I'm very curious to f to learn more. Um, the dial does look original, but yeah, it's just a very weird combination. Might also be for surveillance purposes, but it's the first Wittnauer I've ever seen. And lastly, uh, with the A to Z, we end at Zenit. And yeah, for the Zenit, they're one of the more, um, well, tricky to find watches, but... I really like them, so I put, I've got a little collection. I've actually got more than these, but um, yeah, I misplaced a few. Um, most of the Zenits um, that I have have steel cases because I sold uh, a few of my chromed cases. But you've got them in two models, so you've got the chromed case and the steel case. This one, obviously a chromed case. Uh, the plating is worn. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, the chrome case they always have the one one five oh yeah fifteen eighteen markings between the lux and on the inside case bag that's how you recognize them this one the hands have been replaced uh crown also has been replaced but the dial is very nice and uh, it's a very nice watch um up next we've got the stainless steel this is quite arguably one of the nicest in the world um it's fully original super pal original conditions yeah nice stainless steel case original crown the dial is super crisp um everything just incredible this one um well also nice to, i just need to replace the crystal um the dial is uh, a bit more silvered um it's because of um well patina same like this one the dial has uh, developed a bit of a silver hue it's the same as when you get a the meteorite dial where the gold under layer comes through this one has a silver under layer which is coming through and yeah it pops quite nicely this one also very nice but um a bit of pattern on this side but just very sweet piece 
And lastly, we've got this one. This is also a chromed piece. If you cannot tell from the case, well, this one is very obvious because it's too shiny. Just look between the bottom lugs and here you clearly see 15, 18. That always means it's chromed. Also, the chromed are a bit smaller, but if you don't have anything to compare it to, um, you can't compare it. But yeah, this one, very nice condition overall, apart, uh, apart from the fact that it has been re-chromed. Anyway, I hope you like it. I hope you learned something. And um, well, if you did like it, please uh, consider subscribing uh, and well, liking or even uh, commenting or sharing this video because it takes quite a while to make all of it. And well, a lot of people have been asking me to make videos um, about my military watches because I've actually hidden most of them away. Um, but yeah, my um the older videos i already have they get quite a few views on youtube and yeah many people message me asking me for well where they can buy watches or where they can learn more um i'm still planning to make a knowledge database at some point in the future um but yeah it's uh for later anyway hope you like it